Welcome to this video about developing custom mBeans with Spring. We start with NetBeans and uh, create a new project. It's a Java web project, a web application. And uh, we name it simple Spring JMX. Click on Next. All this is fine. Click on Next. Don't add the Spring MVC right now. This would add an, a lot of um, unnecessary files. Uh, we will add the Spring framework um, later. Click on Finish. That's it. That's our simple Spring JMX project. And uh, what we do now is we create a very simple um, Java Bean class. So we go to Source Package and we say New Java Class. Um, we name it managed color because it's just a simple uh, bean with a color attribute and with a method that will increment a uh, counter. So we put it in uh, com.examples.defcast. This should be fine. And we add the color private string color and we add the counter as an integer just call it hits that's it and then we generate the getters and setters for the color yeah generate getters and setters for the color right and for the hits let's call the method which is called increment and which is just incrementing the counter and outputting the number of hits. That's it. So it's a very simple Java Bean class. Next, we generate um, the application context XML, which is the file where we specify that this bean should be a uh, spring and bean, and we put this under the web inf. We say new, other, and we pick the spring framework and we say it's a spring XML configuration file. And because we want to use the default name, this should be application context, context XML. And um, it's going to asking us if we want to add the Spring Framework and say yes here. You don't need to add any namespace at this point. Add Spring Framework. This will disappear. And um, click on Finish. Right. So this is our application context XML. Now within this application context XML, we are specifying that our bean which is programmed, it should be loaded as a spring MB, which uh, looks like this. We specify an ID for the spring MB, and uh, we specify the class um, that should be used. And we already set the property of the MB, we give it a default value, the color should be red uh, once it's uh, initialized. Now, in addition to this, we um, need to bootstrap um, Spring. That means the surflet container is looking in the web XML file to determine which classes are needed to activate um, the web application. And the container has to load the context listener, which is specified in the listener element. So I put a listener element and I specify that the context loader listener should be used do it like this. At the end, the Spring Context Listener will load the application's default Spring configuration, uh, which is just the application context XML. This is what we specified here with the listener XML element. Um, I saved this and so far we've only been programming a Spring bean and there's nothing to do with uh, JMX so far. But now we add a little bit of magic to the application context that will register our spring bean and uh, export it to the mbean server, which looks like this. Um, basically, we specify the exporter, which is the spring framework JMX export mbean exporter. 
And uh, for here, we reference the beam, um, which is defined here. And um, this is it. We save it. We build the project, clean and built. WebLogic server is already running. The project is being built and I'll deploy the project. Now, when deploying the project, it's uh, quite useful to have a look here on the WebLogic site. If the Spring framework is bootstrapped when the application is deployed, so this might take a bit. There's a problem because the uh, manage color uh, class is not found because we put an S too much here. So I'll change this to example. And this should be, I'll deploy again. And we see what happens now. And it's deploying now. The application is started. If you look on WebLogic, you see the output and you see that the class is loaded by Spring. That's wonderful. Now to prove the point that the MBean is really loaded and registered as an MBean in the MBean server, we use a generic MBean client. We use the J console. Actually the J console is coming with every JDK installation. So we can just go to the JDK we go to the bin directory and uh, then I start the J console, which is right here. I'll pick WebLogic server connected. Um, it takes a bit and it's uh, showing an overview of the heap usage you see memory usage, you see what the threads are doing, all different threads, you see the class is loaded, a VM summary, which is really nice because it gives you information about the garbage collectors. It shows you the time they spend running and uh, the number of times uh, they were running and the type of algorithm that is running. Now, here we're interested in the mBeans. And as you can see here, there is the domain part of our mBean. It's com example def cost. And if you click on it, you will see that there is the manage color. It has an attribute which is set to red already. And there is an uh, operation which is uh, called increment. Now, if I click on increment, it says method successfully called. I click again and you can see what's happening here. It's saying hits one, two, and um, it's incrementing. So it's, it's counting the, um, the increments. And if you want to change the color, you can just set a new color. And to prove it's set, you can retrieve it and it's set to white. If you want to set it to black, set it to black. That's it, you retrieve the color and it's set to black. Now the fascinating thing is we use the standard client. So it's not, it's not a WebLogic specific client, it's just a client, it's the J console that comes with every JDK. So this is a way how to implement your own application um, features and you have them changeable from the outside using a standard protocol such as JMX and using a standard client um, such as the J console. At the same time, you didn't have to write any JMX code. You didn't have to register the MBean when the application was deployed and you didn't have to deregister the MBean uh, when the application is undeployed. All this is handled um, by Spring for you. We now use the WebLogic scripting tool to connect to our custom MBeans that we just developed. We connect to the server, which is now easier because we stored the credentials already and I change to the custom area. And I'll set the e syntax for easier navigation. And you already see our com examples def cast domain part. CD com examples def cast. Uh, it's no S. And 
we can cd to the M beam. Right, and check the attributes. You see the color attribute, which is um, set to red. Get color is red and set color dark dark blue. You see, we changed it to different color. At the custom area for the custom M means there is no CMO object. So you cannot call directly the increment method. However, there's a workaround. There is an MBS object, which is the MBN server, the remote MBN server connection. We can use this to call the increment method. It's a slightly more complicated. It's MBS. invoke and then we need object name from the object which is here we need the name of the method increment and there's no arguments passed now you see I can call the method call the operation and let me switch to NetBeans to the output you see it's called four times and let me do it again twice and it's is a return missing yeah it's called six times now so this is the more generic way to call an operation on a custom MBean using the WebLogic scripting tool. And you see also this is possible. Just remember there's no CMO object. You have to construct the invoke with the MBS. Thanks for watching. Let's stay in touch.